Okay, so hello, it has been forever and a day. This is sort of like a haul, review, tutorial, video burrito. I had so many products that I wanted to review or haul for you guys, and I had a lot of things that I wanted to make a tutorial with because I've been playing with them, and I'm like, oh my god, I just didn't know which video I wanted to do next, and I'm like, well, why not just like do them all together in one big, mega ultimate awesome video so there will be some swatches throughout this video there will be like little mini blurb reviews not like a novella review of you know everything with like all kinds of details and stuff like that but just like a little blurb like this is what this is like and this is my first impression of that and stuff like that throughout this video as opposed to a more straightforward tutorial where you just kind of like this step this step this step this step we're using a bunch of new products some oldies but goodies some favorites um a new foundation that i'm kind of obsessed with i've got new mascara a new brow product i mean this is like a full face of new shit. Let me know what you think of the format of this video. I also want to invite you to see a tutorial on how I curled my hair today in the description bar down below. And if you haven't yet checked out my bra guide, I would definitely recommend it. It's a 30 minute long video that's almost like, it's like bra college basically. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this video. We'll just kind of go through some of my prep work which I clearly have already done. So I filled in my eyebrows today with a Anastasia Beverly Hills Perfect Brow Pencil. Uh, for a long time I was using the Brow Wiz pencil. I was recently at Sephora and I saw this pencil and it was billed as like a, a powder pencil and I love the powder pencils from Makeup Forever. Uh, MAC has one, the Velux eyebrow pencil or brow lux or I don't know whatever so I decided to go ahead and check this out because the auburn color is my favorite color for red hair and I really like the way that this works you can get a really nice sharp you know pencil precise tip with it it's sort of a combination in between a traditional you know liner pencil and a powder it's quite cool so I use this to fill in my eyebrows today and then for my primer I use my handy dandy absolute favorite primer of all time at least at the moment uh, this is the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer in Enigma not only is this a fabulous primer which provides both color coverage and sort of a little bit of color correction to even out the the skin and the eyelid one of my favorite things about this is that it benefits the violet edge which is the Urban Decay uh, foundation that helps empower women all over the globe so getting us started today I'm going to use my Modern Renaissance palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills and I'm going to dip into Love Letter which might be one of the loveliest eyeshadows I've ever used and I'm using that on a MAC 217 and I'm just going to ride that right in my crease line. This eyeshadow is fab you lust. Not only is it incredibly pigmented, I mean I just picked up a little bit of it and it's still turning out just beautiful. Uh, but it blends really well. I find some red eyeshadows can be a little bit on the patchy side, a little difficult to blend. And this one is more of like a berry red, but nevertheless, it just blends like a dream. So to blend that out just a little bit more, I'm going to take Makeup Forever M816. This is a matte eyeshadow. I think it's called like Rosewood or something. I don't know. It's a perfect complement to this other shade. It's just great for blending it out and acting as a transition between the crease and the highlight. So at the beginning of this video I made this big speech about all this like new, 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 oh my god. Okay, well apparently not so much. So I'm going to be using my very old and very like grubby looking, it's it's totally sanitized which is actually why it looks like this. Uh, when you sanitize your makeup really often sometimes it doesn't really stay so nice looking but anyway. So using the same brush that I've used for all the other colors today, this is still the MAC 217. In fact, actually this might be the Sigma version of it. I don't really know anymore. The label's worn off at this point. Uh, speaking of old things, so I'm just blending this right over where we applied the other colors. And some people out there might be saying, isn't that a little counterintuitive? Well, the Poison Plum is a very medium purple, but it can start to sort of go to like a very cool toned color if it's blended with the right or wrong things depending on how you want it. So by having a warm color down first as a base for it, it really helps to warm it up and keep it really, really just, oh, I mean, look at that. Yes. The other thing is that Poison Plum can be a little sticky and tricky to blend. Sorry, just keep it a real. So that's kind of part of the situation as well. I'm actually going to pick up a little bit more of Love Letter on a clean 217 and then use that to blend out the edges of the purple shadow. Now this could even help to like 
tilt your head, your like turn a different position, you cock your head slightly different way. Seeing your eyeshadow from different positions can also help you to see if you're blending it evenly. I do recommend sort of checking back at base camp one, which is your nose straight at your mirror, but definitely you want to check out the different angles, see what's happening. For my highlight today, I'm going to be taking a MAC 252, which is a nice wide flat brush, and temper eyeshadow from the Modern Renaissance palette. And if you're not sure why I'm calling it Renaissance, then you haven't watched How I Met Your Mother. Because that's how Ted Mosby pronounces it, and every time he does, I laugh. <laughs> so what I do is I lay down the color first with the 252, and then I take a fluffier sort of angled brush here, and I'm going to use that to blend in between the highlight and the crease colors, but I don't actually want to like bring that highlight color down into it, because for one, I don't want to totally ruin my highlighting job, or my I don't want to ruin my blending. And more importantly, I don't want it to be like shimmering disco nights, like all the way down my lid. I want to maintain those matte colors that I placed in the crease. Now for the lid work, I'm going to use a base from LA Girl. This is the Pro Primer. This is a fabulous base. It's nice and sticky without being too greasy. I absolutely love this. It comes in three different colors. I actually bought it as a set on Amazon. So I got the black one, the nude one, and the white one for like, I think seven bucks. Amazing! gonna go ahead and place this all over my lid and I'm gonna start out just putting it in the center but I'm gonna sort of blend it a little bit out from there so just kind of smoosh it on the center that looks so creepy <laughs> so I'll take a MAC 242 brush and I'm just going to sweep that or blend that a little bit and it's going to look a little bit more gray in tone which is exactly what we want that when it blends out, it blends softly and doesn't have a harsh edge. Okay, so for the inner corner here, I'm going to take a Makeup Forever eyeshadow, it's M928. This is a really beautiful purpley burgundy shade. I'm using a MAC 219 brush to apply this to the inner part of my lower lid. In the outer part of my lower lid as well. You could also just reuse Poison Plum if you just have the one on hand, of course. But I want a nice dark, deep burgundy. I'm so for the lid today, I'm going to be using the Urban Decay Moon Dust Palette. And remember how I said that sometimes when you sanitize your makeup, it doesn't stay looking pretty? Case in point, do you see all this weirdness here? This is from my spray sanitizer. So today on the lid, we're gonna use Sparkle Heaven here. This is the Moon Dust Palette from Urban Decay. These are not necessarily eyeshadows, they're almost like a pressed glitter. They have a little bit of pigmentation in them, but mostly it's just very densely packed glitter. So what I'm going to use today is this gorgeous one called Galaxy, which is a beautiful bluish green. And I'm just gonna use my finger to apply it. So pick that up on my finger and I'm pressing that into the base that we applied earlier. These all have a pretty decent amount of color payoff. Some of them are a little more intense than others. This is definitely one of the more intense colors. And I really love how well the glitter sticks. Now, this is still glitter, okay? So let's just get realistic. You may have some fallout. But it's not anywhere as bad as it would be if you used a loose glitter. I hadn't used any of the Moon Dust eyeshadows until I got this palette, and I have to say I am super impressed, really, really in love with these. Pick up that 242 from earlier to blend just lightly. You'll notice we will get a little bit of glitter fallout down here. Why well, I haven't done my foundation yet, because fallout is bound to happen with these glittery shadows. I do feel the need to pump up the volume a little bit on my Poison Plum, so I'm going to do that now with the 217 from earlier. Just sort of come in, let her presence be known. On this outer and inner corner, I thought I was going to go in with more of a burgundy eyeshadow, but I've changed my mind. I'm going to use Max Contrast because Max Contrast eyeshadow makes everything better. So I'm placing that over where I had that burgundy eyeshadow earlier. And it's just going to be like this little smoky midnight situation. I'm just using a pencil brush to apply that to get the most precision out of my application. And oop, fall out. That happens when you don't tap your brush off. Gotta remember that. Here's something I'm not sure we talk about very often on my channel or 
anywhere really on YouTube. I don't really see people talking about how to maintain that corner when you want you've created something soft for instance like in this case we created something relatively soft this thing is sometimes it helps to just come back with another highlight shade this is another makeup forever eyeshadow this is m530 i just got a little bit of that on my 252 brush and here i'll do it i'll show you guys on this side so i want to make sure that that edge stays nice and soft so i'll just sort of tickle around the edge right nothing major and we're going to remove some of this lighter color with our um, makeup remover in just a moment. But I'll just sort of cup around that edge like that to blend the highlight in a little bit. So it has a nice soft edge to it. It has a nice like haloed out look. When it comes to removing the fallout, you want to be very careful not to disrupt that rounded edge. So I'm going to take a Q-tip. Mine's black. I got it at Daiso. And this is Bioderma, which is a really great makeup remover that you can apply makeup straight over. So you want to be very careful. You see how I'm still drawing a relatively straight line, but I'm doing it below the edge of where that eyeshadow is. The most important thing is you'll see I'm coming from the outside in. It's much more easy to control it that way as opposed to going this way and you're going to end up flicking too high. So for foundation today, I'm going to be using another new Urban Decay product. This is the All Nighter Waterproof Longwear Liquid Foundation. It's probably one of the most beautiful like bottles of foundation I've ever seen. It's really quite beautiful. Uh, what I find interesting about this is that it is incredibly full coverage. Really, really full coverage. It has a gel-like texture and it has a matte finish, which is quite nice. And I find that I really don't have to set this with powder if I don't want to, which is fabulous. I've tried the method of application with this one a few different ways. I've tried just using my fingers, which worked great, uh, although it was a little messy. I've tried a dense brush like this, which also looked great. And it also looks great with a beauty blender or other makeup sponge type, type you know, application. One thing about this foundation I did notice is that this foundation does dry really quickly and it sets hardcore like you can't go in and then blend it out later it's not like a lot of foundations that don't really quite set that you can kind of you know if it gets a little you know messed up around your eyeglasses or something like that you can kind of smudge it out with this you can't do it so you do need to be very diligent when you're applying it initially and make sure you get it fully blended i like to apply it where i need the most coverage first so i'll take it like for instance on my cheeks where i tend to have more redness and i want to work as quickly as possible so I'm using the thinner side of the brush to get the product placed really precisely. And then I'll come back with the bottom end and blend it out. Being very careful around my eye area. This is incredibly effective at covering. So, I mean, look how, look at this coverage. It's insane. And it's even covering a little bit of stubble I have going on on my chin. If you'd like to learn more about how I shave my shave my beard sh and shave my face go ahead and click in the description bar down below i'll have a link to my face shaving video so we still have these glorious under eye circles that's okay because urban decay's got something for that as well some time ago i think maybe in the spring urban decay came out with all these different color correctors and while we could kind of discuss at length maybe another time the color corrector trend I think that this is one of the better ones out there because the texture is very similar to their concealer it's even in a similar bottle like here's the naked skin concealer here is the Naked Skin Color Correcting Fluids. I think that these are quite brilliant, to be honest with you. Um, I had already purchased a few of these shades, and so I was really excited to try out some of the other ones. Today I'm going to start out by mixing the peach in with a regular concealer. This is the Fair Neutral and the Peach Corrector. So I have a little bit of the concealer and just a little bit of the color corrector. Because we don't want it to turn too peachy, because then it would be too deep for my personal skin tone. And then I'll take my brush and I'll mix them together. And this is warmer than just going up one shade in the regular concealer, which is a little bit too beige for my skin. So I'm going to go just where I really, really need both, both the concealing and color correction. I tend to be a little blue right in here as well. And you'll see it doesn't even really look peachy, but it's going to correct that, that undertone of the blue. Because a lot of times when you have a blue undertone, it's not, you know, just depending on your skin, and I already have a little bit of foundation on as well, it doesn't look blue, so you wouldn't want to go in hardcore with this, just in this particular situation. I have a friend who has very dark circles under her eyes, and the peach would be perfect, so, Gabrielle, if you're listening, girl, you need this. Next order of business, also using my hand as a palette, 
I'm going to grab a little bit more of my concealer. And this time I'm going to blend it in with a bit of the yellow. Use the same brush, blend that in. So you, you can really see here on my hand all these subtle tones. This is the shade of my foundation, which is a bit darker, so the concealer is just a, t a touch lighter. This is the shade that we used for under the eye. This is the shade I'm going to use to cover up whatever the heck that is. You just need a little bit of concealer pinpointed where you need it. And you just want to go softly around and then just sort of almost tap on top of the point of it to cover it up. Now, as with anything, and I've said this a million times and I'll say it again, you can cover the color but you can't always cover the texture. So there might still be a bump there and the bump itself may still cast a shadow, but you can correct the color so that especially in photographs and things like that it won't show. I'm just going to use a very small sweeping of this just where I have it. A little bit of redness tends to creep through underneath my nose right here. So just using the tiniest little bit of that and blending it out will help to balance that red out later. Well, I don't really feel the need to set this foundation. It's actually going to last pretty well. I do want to set under my eyes. So I'm going to use a little bit of the RCMA No Color Powder. And I just sort of dip that into my hand. You can see my hand becomes quite a palette for me. <laughs> hey, if it's there, it's clean. There's really no reason why to not use it. So I get a bit of that powder on my beauty blender. And then I'll just press that into my under eye area. And this is where I'm going to get my highlight action going. And just a little bit on my nose because I do tend to get a little bit shiny in there and this will also help to mask pores. But I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a powderholic. So for me to just take it on a few spots is like some kind of a miracle. And then because I don't want to be doing too much with it, I will then take my Wayne Goss 14 brush and just wick away any excess. So as you can see, my eyebrows have neutralized somewhat. I am going to now go over first with a clear brow gel and then with a little bit of warm brown. This is a brow tamer tinted brow gel from Urban Decay. And this is in the shade Warm Brown. And this is a bit darker than what I filled them in initially. And what this is going to do is help my brow hairs to stand out a bit more, seem a bit fuller in some areas where it's a bit more sparse. And then I run my little pinky finger on the edge to make sure that the the tapered end is nice and straight. For black eyeliner today, I'm using one from Lancome called Noir Intense. And I'm going to use this to tightline both top and bottom. And then I'm just taking a little Q-tip to blend that out on the bottom so that it's not all funky and sort of left rough looking. I want it to be a base for putting on the sparkly eyeshadows on the bottom. So taking a small eyeshadow brush, I'm going to go ahead and get back into my Moon Dust palette. I'm going to use Element, which is such a gorgeous color. It has such an intense color flash in between orange and peach and a fiery pink. So I'm picking that up on a small brush and I'm going to press that into the liner that's on my lower lash line, but trying to not press it into the <laughs> liner that's in my waterline because that would be a little uncomfortable. I'm a little sloppy with this application initially. I'm just sort of placing it down. I'm putting this on first before I blend it out with the other colors so that this will sort of aid the blending of the others and then I'll come back and make this more intense in just a moment. But honestly, this alone is actually quite lovely. <laughs> the next order of business, give this a nice smoked out halo. Right now it's a pretty blunt edge. I want it to be nice and soft like this side. So what I'm going to do is first start with Love Letter and a Smith Cosmetics 253. And this is an arrowhead shaped brush. We're just going to use one side of it. And we're going to softly blend out around that black liner that is now covered with the glitter. And what we're trying to do is sort of marry this top area with the bottom. And you may even need to pick up more of the Poison Plum because it's, uh, it's, you can really see the difference now. Well, I mean, you could probably see the difference before, but it's a very cool tone purple. 
but it needs to blend in with the love letter. So then to make the, the glittery shades a little bit more intense, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the Ila Mosca Sealing Gel on a Smith 203 brush to go back into the Moondust palette. And I'm just going to use the side of Element, just like one little area. Whenever you want to use an eyeshadow wet or with some sort of mixing medium, you want to sort of pick a spot to use it with that so that you're not ruining the entire eyeshadow because occasionally a crust can develop. And this brush is really, really fine. So I'm just going to press this and it's going to make the color so much more intense right over that liner. And you can blend it out a little bit. And then I'm going to dip into my Moonchild palette. Woo! Yes! Love this. Um, these Anastasia Glow Kits are kind of amazing. I, this is my second. I have the original Gleam and now this. I've wanted some of the others, but I just was like, I don't know if I can really justify it, but this one is quite interesting. It's got some really fun, funky colors. It's got some really great dual chromatic eyeshadow, or, oh, well, you can use them as eyeshadows as I'm doing now, or uh, highlights. Anyway, taking Pink Heart, which is probably the, one of the most normal ones. It's a nice pink iridescence, and I'm just layering that in the inner corner to add a nice little highlight. My upper lash line, I'm just going to do a pretty thin line, so I'm going to use Perversion Waterproof Fine Point Eye Pen. I don't know if this is different from the original liquid liner. It's been so long since I've used that. This does seem like a much finer point than what I recall anyway. I could just be remembering it wrong. But it's really quite lovely for getting just the tiniest little thin line because I'm not going to do lashes today or anything like that. So I don't want it to compete with my, my meager little eyelashes as they are. I just want it to add a little bit of depth right at the root of the lash. I'm going to bust out with my eyelash torture device. Give my lashes a squeezy poo. A new mascara came in the mail. This is the DJV Marais. This is essentially fiber wig. I think they've gone through some weird stuff. Like there's been times where I haven't been able to find fiber wig, but I believe this is the replacement of it. Let's go ahead and paint on some lashes. This is one of the tubing mascaras. You guys know how I feel about tubing mascaras. I think that they are just the best thing. They're the cat's meow. And this is yet another one of them. What I like about this one is a lot of a lot of uh, tubing mascaras are not easily buildable, and you still can't build this one once it's already set. But you can, you know, as I just did there, I left it on for a few seconds, and I'm coming back with a second coat, and it actually gives you volume. Like, what the heck? Now, of course, you really can't see it all that well because my eyeshadows are so dark today. Just trust me. Okay, so I just realized what this is missing, and it's a little bit more of these delicious sparkly eyeshadows. I'm going to take a little bit of Magnetic, which looks really intensely pigmented here, but again, these don't have a lot of actual pigment. They're really just really, really densely packed glitter. I'm going to place that over this inner corner, right, and I'm just going to take my little pinky finger and blend that out so that all that's left behind is the glitter reflects a lot of purple and blue glitter. I think that's just exactly what this needed. So before we actually do the cheeks and lips, I'm going to go ahead and take my hair down. Put it up in my little hair roller thing here. If you guys are curious about how I curl my hair without heat, I do have a video about these heatless waves that I do. So I'll go ahead and have a link to that video if you guys want to check it out. Not that many people saw that video. And I think this is such like a useful tip. So I I'd like to invite you to watch that tutorial when you're done with this one. <laughs> See? My hair was straight. Like, for real. So what are we going to do for the cheek and lips? Starting out, I'm going to go ahead and do my contour today. I'm going to use my NYX Taupe Blush. You guys know I love this stuff. I get so I'm going to apply this as my contour. As you do. So for blush today, I'm going to use the Afterglow Blush from Urban Decay. This is fetish. It's sort of a good color that can ride between warm and cool. Occasionally I'll use this and it looks too cool depending on what I've paired it with. Uh, but today it's just going on nice and neutrally. It's sort of right in between. In fact, it even almost looks a little bit warm, probably based on just everything else around it. And my hair is also kind of warming up the situation. 
gonna sort of blend that onto the cheek. It does most of the work for you. And then for highlight, ooh, so excited. I'm gonna use my Wayne Goss fan brush, which is, I'm a big fan of this fan brush. <laughs> green. I feel like today is a day that would be appropriate to use the green, so Lucky Clover with my Wayne Goss fan brush. And I'm just going to dust that right here and then blend it down a little bit like that. Just blend that right there on the highlight. And then I like to sort of curve it down a little bit. And then, you know, for shits and giggles, let's go ahead and just... This is beautiful because it has that greenish tint to it. This is also another way to maybe combat some redness, a little color correction with your highlight, because why not? It's a great alternative if you no longer want to buy like the Jeffree Star Skin Frost because you don't want to support him or anything. Here's a green highlighter for you. Okay, lips. Lips. So when it comes to lips, I don't really know what to do. I definitely want to wear like a lip gloss to make it kind of easy on myself. Um, and ColourPop sent me this kind of huge big box of lip gloss and I feel like I should probably investigate. So there's all these gorgeous neutral colors and then there's like hot pinks, reds, oranges, and oh my god is that a green. We're using that. So this is the Ultra Glossy Gloss in Crystal Ball and this is a metallic finish lip gloss. So let's find out. Oh, shut up. That has hella pigmentation. I've literally never put this on my lip. I haven't even tried any of the lip glosses yet, so. Not bad for a chick who hasn't worn makeup in a few weeks. So, that is the look. Definitely went into, like, this, like, vampy, vampy area there at the end. I'm digging it. Oh, I'm not digging it green lip gloss in the teeth though. Okay, so <laughs> the green lip gloss, you can see it's left a bit of a stainer on my mouth. It was getting everywhere. I was eating lip gloss. It was totally grossing me out. So I'm going to put on a luxury lipstick instead, just totally switching gears. This is Electric Poppy. This is the new Charlotte Tilbury line of lipsticks. It's sort of a hybrid between the K-I-S-S-I-N-G uh, lipstick, which is a very creamy formula, and the Matte Revolution, which is a little bit more of a matte formula. Uh, so this one is sort of like a balmy matte. So we're going to see if this can cover up all that green. Let me know what you guys think of this format of video. It's sort of like a mashup of a tutorial, a haul, a review, all in one. It's like a, it's like a makeup tutorial burrito. Nom nom nom. All right. So I'll see you. I'm hungry, you guys. It's dinner time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Remember to be vintage or tacky. Just be your own kind of beautiful.